Okay, time for our next Silver Tongue Devil. I personally nicknamed this guy the Boho Bard of the Bowery. Like me, he came to this game later in his life. He seems now to be like a volcano of new work, just flowing like hot lava through the downtown spoken word circuit. He's a poet, he's a playwright, he hosts a very cool monthly poetry series honoring poets of the Beat Generation. I was privileged to read it to Lawrence Furman getting one. It's a really nice series. If you ever get a chance to go down, Yippee Cafe. Please welcome a really versatile and talented guy, Gordon Gilbert. Come on up, Gordon. And let his careless thoughts to roam from promises made far away. She walked along the rocks of shore and lingered till the coming day. She must have come, but did not stay, and comes no more. Now, I'm going to go completely Shakespeare on you. This is the first one. I rewrote this recently to make it much more of that time. It's called Morning Dew. If thou hast doubt, twill be erased as drops of dew be by the morning sun. For tis a different heat I feel, inhaling the hot fragrance of thy presence, awakening in me such strong desire to touch, to hold, to penetrate, to be encompassed and enraptured, brought to such ecstasy as two can share, ere the afterglow of love's embrace. I speak from pledged heart of thee and me, and harmony, the music of our bodies intertwine, twisting, turning in love's song and dance, rejoicing as we two spin round and round, until we must collapse, helpless and breathless, our passions spent each in the other's arms. Thank you. Now this is a true story. I only was able to write this recently because the second half only happened recently. A tale of two incidents observed and now related. A cool spring breeze across from Jersey must have blown the fluttering orange and black winged butterfly dancing in and out of view that lit upon the tarmac just a hairbreadth from the stationary left front wheel of the car ahead of me as we waited for the lights to change. Ah, taking in the heat of sun on blacktop, ecstatic in the warmth that it soaked in, wings splayed out against the surface out of sight, too low and down for the driver to observe, with me, myself, the only one positioned to bear witness to this fragile beauty resting on the road. When the light turned green again, the car ahead began to move, and I thought surely it would fly off now, but so absorbed it was, absorbing heat, it did not move. I carefully eased right when I moved forward, thinking as I passed it by, the movement of my car across its vision or the slight breeze stirred up by my passing would alert it, stir it from its trance, and it would fly away, but no. Beyond it now I watched in my side mirror in quiet disbelief and great dismay as it remained immobile, while the car behind me, black, low slung, white tired and its driver unaware bore down upon this fragile offering outstretched on the road the last i saw was that white tire rolling over where the creature lay i thought how like that butterfly we sometimes are so self-absorbed in service to our senses indulging in the pleasures of the moment, unaware, at times oblivious to a larger world that looms around us fraught with many dangers that we do not choose to see. 
As I continued on my way uptown along the river from the depths of memories long buried, stirred to surface by this poignant brief vignette, long forgot I now recalled an incident along a country road I traveled years ago. A black Corvette, low slung, wide tired, first heard, then seen behind me as I passed a stand of pines along that road. As I looked back in my side mirror at this dark and menacing machine, I saw coming down from out those pines. It must have had its reasons, but that's of no matter now. Darting came a fast, small squirrel, a blur of red, right angle to the road, intent on crossing. Was it fate or just bad timing? Timing's everything. Seen for but a moment, streaking for the other side, it never made. It disappeared beneath the left front tire of that growling monster. Seen for but a moment, that time, like this myself, the only witness. Red once, this time orange, nature crushed beneath the wheel of progress. First time, bad timing, and this last, most recent, done in while satisfying hot desire. And there I have to leave the poem because I last, well, I lost the last page. <laughs> oh my God, I spilled them while I was on the stairs under that fan cooling off. Okay. That's it. How much more time do I have? Six minutes. Oh, right. All right. Rock on, bro. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take you on the death spiral. <laughs> Just what we were waiting for. <laughs> Maybe if I have enough time, I'll end with something nicer. Dying by degrees. If we are not taken off, our lives cut short by knife of circumstance, destroyed by plague or other happenstance, then nonetheless we'll surely die if but by slow degrees then surely we shall die by slow degrees. First to go, illusions and delusions, fairness, justice, faith, equality, that we are somehow special, favored, and unique, different from all the others, apart from all the rest, because we are the chosen, the anointed, the bastard child of God or king. The only one to whom the voices speak. Next to die, the ones who loved and held us dear, who nested, clothed, and fed us, and sheltered us from fear. And then the flower wilts, the petals fall of youth and beauty, strength, vitality, departing all. And that same wind that carries them away bears our hopes and dreams as well, the last to go before we take our leave. We come into this life, but cannot stay. A little less sad right now. Friends of thought, this is like, this is like mountain country here. Dawn breaks sand sun in these hills, another foggy morning wake down. Pouring frothy brew, looking out and down this half in valley, sipping from a steaming cup, so much bubbles up. Threads of thought drift, nothing nailed down, only screwed in temporary along with all the rest of me, certain of removal. When this life I'm leasing short term must be turned in, penalties paid for all the extra mileage beyond contractual agreement that we both knew would happen with the years, but still signed on to. Small price for a life in overdrive. The journey has been good. It's good to be alive. I hope to go a few more miles yet. See what lies the other side of yon far mountain ridge before the night falls, and I must turn in. A closing board. The future stretches ahead of me, but not so far ahead. I also see a closing door, the other side of which I know that it continues on, but not for me. 
My journey ends this side that door and I see less and less the other side, a future that no longer will be mine. But for a time I will continue on until I reach that door. But I'll take my time. <laughs> okay. I think I got time for this one more. Yeah. Philosophical. I'll have to skip the the happy one. Uh, <clears throat> We have a happy one. <laughs> In spirals, we are bound. Thoughts spiral bound, writ down before forgot, inked to live on a few more hours, last a few more days, pages soon torn from a notebook, spiral down by a careless hand, crumpled, tossed, lying in the grass among dead leaves, or simply dropped and scattered by the wind. Messages, sands, bottles. First rain to fall, meanings will blur, raindrops blotting inked words into blotches, red, blue, black, and green merging with white paper. The sense of thoughts dissolving, only patterns now. Shapes retained, stretched out along blue lines of permanence. Lost language, indecipherable. No Rosetta Stone, but time's reversal. A careless hand undone, a wind that gathers pages, rising up from grass and leaves to reunite, wrapped round again upon a spiral bound. But why stop there? Why not unwrite the lines? Lift ink from right to left, refill the pen, unthink the thoughts, undo this sense of futile effort, ill-spent time of wasted life. What? Then begin again? It will not happen. We cannot stop with words we pen, the sure undoing of all that we do. We are meant to form and be unformed and recombined. Ephemeral thoughts, no less than we ourselves, it is so written in our very DNA. Message sans bottle. We are spiral bound, but not for long, just for now. On that happy thought. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gordon.